This book is is neither an accusation nor a confession, and least of all an adventure. For death is not an adventure to those who stand face to face with it. It will try simply to tell of a generation of men who, even though they may have escaped shells, were destroyed by the war. This epigraph from the novel All Quiet on the Western Front perfectly encapsulates the novel's purpose and the topic of this podcast. With the help of, of this novel and other outside information, I will demonstrate that those who survived war are forever damaged and disconnected from society due to the horrors and savagery they experience. The horrors of war covered in this podcast consist of constant death, danger, killing, and loss, which is what causes soldiers who survive to be forever damaged and unable to regain the connection to society they had prior to the war. On page 67 of All Quiet on the Western Front, the main character, Paul Brommer, describes the battlefield, stating, But the shelling is stronger than everything. It wipes out the sensibilities. I merely crawl still farther under the coffin. It shall protect me, though death himself lies in it. This quote illustrates that the death-defying situations soldiers must go through that later contribute to their PTSD and disconnection from society. The scene symbolizes the irony in Paul surviving the shelling, but left... but being left, in a sense, more dead than the corpse disintegrated by the bombing. Similarly, the article Combat Fatigue by Encyclopedia Britannica notes the mental disability shell shell shock first appeared in World War I, as it was the first war that utilized artillery, machine guns, and heavy explosives. The shelling Paul experiences while under the coffin displays how soldiers who survived shelling could remain physically unharmed, but their minds were still severely damaged due to the trauma. Paul describes of another horrific scene of, of war on page 221 of All Quiet on the Western Front. Here Paul utters, but every gasp lays my heart bare. This dying man has time with him. He has an invisible dagger which, with which he stabs me, time, and my thoughts. This scene happens after Paul slits the, an enemy soldier's throat, but is unable to finish him due to the remorse he experiences. Every ga- gasp the dying man takes plunges Paul deeper into guilt and pain. And though the soldier is dying, Paul is also damaged by the experience. The article World War I by Encyclopedia Britannica reiterates the savagery of war described by Paul in the last quote as it explains the gruesome and hellish experiences soldiers had while fighting in the trenches. The article explains how the constant danger of bombing, bullets, and gas entering trenches contributed to a majority of World War I soldiers developing PTSD. Close quarter of combat led to many soldiers having to kill by stabbing and bludgeoning their enemies, which often led to crippling guilt and depression. On page 181 of All Quiet on the Western Front, Paul visits the mother of one of his lost friends. This interaction shows how war not only disconnects soldiers from society, but also the soldiers' loved ones. Describing the interaction with with the mother, Paul remarks, I pity her, but she strikes me as rather stupid. Why doesn't she stop worrying? Kemmerich will stay dead whether she knows about it or not. When a man has seen so many dead, he cannot understand any longer why there should be so much anguish over a single individual. Paul's statement shows the perpetual loss soldiers experience while at war numbs them from the feeling of sadness that normal people experience, which which disconnects them from society and leads to them being closed off. This quote also shows the idea that the families of soldiers often suffer collateral damage. The war damages families of soldiers by taking away their loved ones and bringing about a constant worry of never seeing them again. The article Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder by Encyclopedia Britannica also shows the effect war has on citizens and family of soldiers. The article provides information from surveys of victims of, of Afghanistan. War and soldiers of soldiers' families. It also provides statistics of depression, anxiety, and PTSD among those same two groups. A a survey of 800 citizens of Afghanistan revealed that 64% experienced traumatic events and 42% experienced PTSD. Out of the 800 family members of soldiers surveyed, 38% experienced experienced anxiety and 67% experienced symptoms of depression. Though the article does not directly involve the effects of war on soldiers, I feel it helps put in perspective how terrible the horrors of war are and how it can harm those who aren't even in battle. Another example of the destructive reality of war comes from the film The Hurt Locker, which also takes place in Afghanistan. The film follows the story of William James and his psychological reaction to the stress of combat. 
It provides a glimpse into the effect war has on his life when he returns to society. The article from ProQuest, Here at War, Survivor at Home, features a review of the film that perfectly describes the movie. War films like The Hurt Locker illuminate the devastating reality of war and the humanness of warrior heroes. They reaffirm the warrior's heroism and sacrifice while also acknowledging war has a damaging war as damaging to the warrior's psyche, hearts, minds, and bodies. This quote shows how the film how the, how the film The Hurt Locker and All Quiet on the Western Front are similar even though the characters and wars are very different. They both reveal the savagery of war and the effects on soldiers' psyches. In All Quiet on the Western Front, Paul returns home from the war in a similar war. Paul's return home from the war is similar to William's return in the film, The Hurt Locker. The quote from page 160 of the book perfectly illustrates the response affected the response affected soldiers often have when returning home from war. In this quote, Paul mutters to himself, I breathe deeply and say over to myself, You are at home, you are at home, but a sense of strangeness will not leave me. I cannot feel at home amongst these things. There's my mother, there's my sister, my case of butterflies, and there the mahogany piano. But I'm not myself there. There's a distance, a veil between us. Despite fighting in very different conflicts, both William and Paul were left forever damaged by the horrors they faced and were not able to be happy among the things that once gave them joy. Serving one's country has, has historically been viewed as a heroic and honorable achievement but it's constantly romanticized in both film and literature with the goal of hiding the true horrors of war. Films like Top Gun, Red Dawn, and, John, and the John Wayne series may reach top of the box office, but they romanticize war as a place where you can find love and glory. Stories like All Quiet on the Western Front and The Hurt Locker hide little from the audience and expose them to the, tr the hard truths of war. The reality is there is there's little if any love and glory in the bat in battle and if you survive you may emerge on the other side damaged and disconnected from society